Info. All right, good morning, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful Merry Christmas. Why don't you stand with me? Let's sing together. We're going to sing one last Christmas carol for the season to end the year. The first Noel. The first Noel. The angels did say was to serve.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your King, Jesus. Your Son, our King, today. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name today. Come on, let's keep singing the name of Jesus this morning. There's power in that name today. Let's continue worshiping Him, Jesus. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break at your name, Steve. Call the sea to steal, the rage in me to steal every way at your name.
Let's just tell him we love him today. Let's sing our song to him in that way. And I love you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Church, how good is God? Can you give God a hand right now? Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you run after us. What a blessing it is, Lord, to have you in our lives during this season, Lord. And we just praise you right now. God, during this season, we've seen so many things. And in this darkness, Lord, we praise you for all of your goodness. The moments of porch drops when we were sick. The moments um, that you just, a smile made our day from someone who was sharing your love. All of the prayers that we received when we needed it the most, Lord, you provided and you answered. And we thank you for that, God. Whatever, Lord, this next year brings, we thank you for your goodness. It is everywhere if we'll only open our eyes and see. And Lord, we pray that you would open our eyes so that we could see you wherever, all around that you are. And we thank you and we praise you for your goodness. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. Thanks for being here today. I just have, my name is Lisa Glazer. I'm the outreach pastor here at River City Church, and I want to welcome you today. So glad you're here. I am so glad to be here. What a wonderful season it's been to celebrate the birth of Christ. Amen? That's right. Um, right now, I just want to do something fun. If you know me at all, I like to do a few fun things. And um, today, I want you to um, get your device out share your favorite meme, go ahead and tag River City Church and um, share the service. This is going to be a great service. We've already had wonderful worship. We want others to know about Jesus. So every time you share that service, you're spreading the gospel and what a blessing it is to do that. We're called to do that. Um, and so right now, um, if you're new, we want you to t text um, the connection. If you'll see that on the screen, it's going to give you a number, and you're going to go ahead and just text CONNECTION to that number. Or if you're new here today, we have a gift for you at our CONNECTION counter. We want you to go ahead and fill out that CONNECTION card. Um, also, one other thing for today, um, if you're watching us online, God bless you. I'm so glad you're watching today and joining with us. We want you to know that we are practicing safe social distance practices. Join us. Um, we're here at River City Church, Beck Lane, 108 Beck Lane, Lafayette, Indiana. Services are 9 a.m. and 11, and we are here for you, and we would love to see you. Um, welcome, everyone, and have a wonderful, blessed day. All right. Well, I'm glad you made it today. Maybe you got a few pounds on you since the last time I saw you. I don't know. But welcome. And the last service of 2020, last Sunday of 2020 at least, we're going to be uh, looking at God's Word in just a moment. But I just, just want you to know, be aware of two, two things today, announcements. And they are that uh, growth track, which normally starts the first week, of January. This this next month is starting on the 10th. So the second week of January, growth track begins. That's that's the system that we have here that helps you discover more about your gifts and your purpose, how you become a member here at River City Church and just a lot of important things that happen in growth track. We look for everybody who's a part of the River City Church congregation to at some point go through growth track. It takes just 4 weeks, but that starts on Sunday, January 10th, instead of on the 3rd. Also, our, we, we baptize people normally on the first weekend every month, but this time again, it's happening January 10th, so if you're planning to be baptized, taking that step since you came to faith in Christ, that's, that's happening in two weeks, not next week. And uh, right now, I, I just want us to take a moment to, to pray, and uh, we're going to be praying about are giving, and um, just want to challenge you, if you've not had an opportunity to participate in our Christmas offering, uh, we're still receiving those gifts. Here's the information that you have at the bottom of the screen here, just about how to give, um, whether you're, you're giving in a special way, like to the Christmas offering, or you're, you're giving your, your tithe. just want to say thank you to you. Keep uh, diligent with this. Keep faithful with this. Um, particularly here at the close of the year. Also, I want you to be aware 
that um, next, uh, I'm sorry, I want you to be aware that, that um, in 10 days from now, we're going to be having the first, uh, first Wednesday prayer and worship gathering of the year. That'll happen on the 6th of, uh, of January. Our, and um, as you're, you're taking note of that, just know also that this year, our, our first Wednesdays are going to focus on the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Every single first Wednesday that we're going to be gathering for worship and prayer, there's going to be uh, a significant block of teaching on receiving from the Holy Spirit. And so I just want to challenge you, if you've not been a part of these, these gatherings, come and receive more in your life. And in particular, uh, open your heart and your life in a new way to the work of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the only way that we stay alive in Christ, is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Also, I um, uh, want you to be aware that this next year, we're going to continue to do the same things that we have. We're going to be focused on reaching people with the message of Christ. We're going to continue to focus on reaching people through our community center. We're going to be rebuilding in many ways as we come into the new year uh, our church as, as hopefully people start to come back into public. And so your continued giving remains really important because those days are coming and coming soon. All right, let's take a moment to pray about our giving and to pray about this coming year. Father, we thank you today that Jesus Christ is our Savior and that we have, we have celebrated and heralded his coming through this Christmas season. And now as we look on to the next year, we pray that that the, that the purpose and the plans and the power of Jesus Christ would come in fullness right here in our midst. That you would reach people. God, that you would, that you would uh, somehow, in, in so many ways, um, rebuild not only this church, but the church throughout the world that has um, taken a hit because of this pandemic. God, I thank you for all the people who have remained faithful during this past year. And we pray that this next year, we not only remain faithful, but we'd see new ways that we can live for you, that we can serve you, that we can, that we can receive and give gifts from you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, check out on the screen this uh, new take on the Christmas story. Hey, babe. Hold on, I'm making a TikTok. Okay, well, Caesar Augustus just issued a tweet. People still use Twitter? Apparently, we gotta go, there's a census now? What do you mean? I don't know, we all, everyone has to go back to the man's hometown to be counted. Wait, I thought Fauci banned travel. We couldn't spend Thanksgiving with our families, but we have to take a census now? Okay, a lot of things the government is saying these days don't make sense. I get it, but yeah, I think we just have to go. I am nine months pregnant. It is Christmas Eve. This is not the time. Listen, it's literally not a big deal. I'll get an Uber. Nazareth to Bethlehem is not that far. Wait, so, how come we have to go to the man's hometown? Don't you think that's a little sexist? Uh, listen, if we're going to go all the way up there, we should probably spend the night. Let me just, I'm trying to find a hotel. I literally can't find anything. Everything's booked. Use your Marriott points. Everything's blacked out. Okay. Well, I just found an Airbnb. Okay. Looks like it's a rustic barn. A full immersive experience. There are live barn animals. Just think about the photo op. You, okay, well, me, the baby, and this guy. No, we're not doing that. Oh, so right. I mean, we've got to do something to top a gender reveal. Listen, I'm sorry we didn't have a balloon popping or a confetti cannon or anything. Ours was better than that. We found out we were having a boy because an angel of the Lord appeared it's to me in a dream. you in your dream. dream, I know. You got chocolate on your face. I know. I mean, I it. know, Joe. All right, so what? All right, I'm going to check reviews. Yeah, all right. Five stars. Okay. Woohoo. Raise the barn roof. Oh, it says the baby has to sleep in a manger. But I read on a mom blog that exposure to hay and allergens, like, isn't good for newborns, so. Are we going to vaccinate, by the way? My parents will not go for that. What? My parents said they wanted us to. Your parents. Okay, I don't know what that means. You're emotional and you're with child. I'm going to choose. 
to ignore that. Listen, we'll just go. I'll pack an overnight bag. Let me just go upstairs. I'll get like some swaddling clothes. Swaddling clothes? Yeah, what? Mm -hmm. what? I read another blog that said if a newborn turns over while it's swaddled, suffocation risks. Listen, I know you're putting a lot of pressure on this. This is your firstborn child. Can you just chill on like the mom blogs for a second? Okay, gifts. What? Let's think this through. Hypothetically, okay. what if three intelligent males want to come and bring us a gift? I mean, where are they coming from? The Far East? Maybe. Just tell them to Amazon Prime it. It's fine. Yeah. Right? That makes sense. Yes. I can't believe we're going to miss Christmas. Yeah, well, I'm pregnant and we're just engaged, so I'm not going to miss the judgmental stares from the in-laws. Thanks. You know, yeah, now, yeah, that makes sense. Now that I think about it, I can't think you put with that. Oh, my. What? I am going to be posting on Instagram. That's not. From a barn. Don't do that. With live barn animals announcing our newborn child. Think about the likes. Listen, can we just lower the expectations here? You're putting a lot of pressure on this, okay? This kid, he's not gonna be perfect. Mm -hmm. I think he is. Well, there you have it. Story that uh, you know, but you probably never saw it like that. Well, listen, today I just want to I just want to focus uh, one more time on the Christmas story, and I, I want to focus on a part of the Christmas story that you probably have have heard, or like you've heard it in a distant way, but maybe you're not you're not really familiar with it. And the thing is, this part of the Christmas story that in, that involves a promise from the eight centuries before Jesus, it's, it's got a lot to offer us in terms of our, of our own lives, our personal lives. And I, I, hope that, I hope that you did enjoy Christmas, wherever it was that you spent it, whoever you spent it with. And uh, uh, I, I just want to say, we had an amazing time here on Christmas Eve. Not only were there a whole lot more people here than I was expecting to see on Christmas Eve, but we had we had a really full house in a socially responsible, distanced way across the way at our new campus in West Lafayette, and between the two, we, we may have had the best attendance on a Christmas Eve we've ever seen. So I was I was amazed by that, but it was it was great to connect with so many people and to see the West Lafayette campus take off in the way that it is. Um, I, I'm. I'm very grateful. I'm looking forward to see what happens there. Of course, they, they'll start to have services at 10 a.m. on January 24th. So just want you to be aware of that. Well, as we get started today, and we're looking at uh, a promise that comes to us in the Christmas story, but it comes to us through the, the Old Testament. I, I want us to look at Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. And this is, this is just after, you know, Moses gets, or I'm sorry, Moses, Joseph gets word that, uh, that Mary is pregnant, and he, he considers divorcing her quietly. This is what the story says. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. That's what Jesus means, God saves. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the, prop, through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, this, these yellow words here, of course, they're the promise. They're, they're the prophecy from the Old Testament. And in, in, whenever you're reading the Bible, and, and you're reading in the New Testament, and, and another scripture is referenced, usually it, it, most Bibles, that they'll tell you where that reference is from. And so it's helpful to, to, to understand where that, where that promise is coming from and what the context of that promise is so that you can understand it more fully and, and, and apply it to your life in a fuller way. And so this promise, this promise about the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, it's found in Isaiah chapter 7. 
And that's the Christmas story that I want to, that's the part of the Christmas story I want to focus on today. Isaiah chapter 7, we're going to look at verses 10 through 17. And this, this, this is a promise that God gives to Ahaz, but of course, all the promises of the Bible, the Bible tells us that, that all the promises of the Bible are ours in Christ. They're ours to hold on to. They're ours to lean into. And here in, uh, here in Isaiah chapter 7, this is a promise that's also meant for us, even though it was delivered to some other people. And understanding the context of that promise is going to help us today. It's going to grow our faith. And in fact, in, in Isaiah chapter 7, there's a king, he's living in uh, Judea. Judea is a, a small realm at this point in history. Jerusalem is surrounded by some, some other smaller towns. And uh, at this point in history, Jerusalem, or I'm sorry, Judea and Israel, which is the northern kingdom, they have split. And so Judea is alone. And the, the 12th king after King David is reigning. His name is, is Ahaz. And it's short for Jehoahaz, the second. That's a long name, Jehoahaz. So no wonder he's shortened here to Ahaz. Ahaz, Ahaz is king, and, and Ahaz is being threatened. He's being threatened by two kings, the king of Israel and, and the king who is the king in Damascus in Syria. And, and he is, uh, he, he's, he's, he's threatened by these people because they are saying that they're going to come in and they're going to kill him. And they're going to put their own king on the throne. They're going to take over his realm. And Ahaz is, is frightened because the thing about Ahaz is he has lived his whole life in an unfaithful way. Ahaz has been the kind of person who's who's built idols and he's, he's, he's turned the hearts of the people of, of his people away from God. And so when Ahaz sees these enemies threatening to kill him, you can just imagine what he thinks. And the last thing that he wants to do, given everything that he's, that he's done up to this point, the way he's lived his life, the last thing he wants to do is to turn to God and ask for help. But the prophet Isaiah comes to him. And again, this is about eight centuries before Jesus. And uh, uh, Jesus is not directly in mind when, when these words are written. When they're written in the New Testament, and this promise is seen, wow, Jesus coming the way he did, it's a fulfillment of that promise. But at the time that it's written, this is the context. The king is in trouble. He's, he, he fears for his life. The king, the king in Jerusalem... He has no reason to expect that God would be merciful to him. That's the context here. And, and this is where the story comes up, starting in verse 10 of Isaiah chapter 7. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. Now, you know, this, this kind of thing that God is inviting Ahaz to ask. This isn't the sort of promise that, that the God of Israel, you'd expect for the God of Israel to ask. And the reason why is because the law of Moses says you can't ask God for a sign. You're not supposed to do this kind of thing right here. And so Ahaz says to him, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. That's, that's what God doesn't allow for in the law. And then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of Israel. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? In other words, if God's asking you to give, if God's asking you to ask him for a sign, you better do it. He says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. God's going to come up with a sign. If Ahaz won't ask for it, God's going God's to give him this miraculous sign. And he says, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. It means God with us. And he will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the right and choose the wrong. This, this is just a reference to the fact that 
in about, about two years after this child is born, before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, about two years after he's born, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. And so what's, what's happening here in Isaiah with the promise of, of Emmanuel is that, is that Ahaz, is, he fears that, that he's going to be destroyed, that his family's going to be wiped out, that, that these other kings are going to take over everything that he owns. And God says, he's sending him a sign, and it comes in the form of a baby who will be named Emmanuel. And before that baby is two years old, Emmanuel, this, this baby Emmanuel, uh, it, it's the sign that before that baby's two years old, these kings are going to be wiped out. They're going to die. And Ahaz's problems uh, will, will vanish. Now, what's, what's ironic about this story, what's sad about the story, is that Ahaz didn't actually take God at his word. Ahaz went and made an alliance with a foreign king, and, and that king protected him and, and, and uh, fought the, the armies who were pressing in on Judea. But as payment, Ahaz paid him out of the treasury of the temple in, in Jerusalem. Ahaz, Ahaz took valuable things from the, from the temple and gave them to the king of Assyria who, who protected him. And then he ended up setting up idols of the Assyrian gods all over his realm. So it's sad he didn't listen to God. But what God was trying to tell him, in essence, was that, that no matter what the trouble that he was facing was, no matter, no matter how deep Ahaz's uh, trials and afflictions no matter how powerful his enemies, that God was promising to be with him. And that, that was making all the difference in the world. And of course, when we read the story in the New Testament, and we see the baby born of the virgin who is Emmanuel, who is God with us, we take, we take fresh hope. Because what, what, what the significance of this is, is that Jesus has come and we are safe from all of our enemies. Because Jesus is with us, we have no reason to fear any circumstance. Because He's Emmanuel. Friends, that's good news. I don't know whether you recognize it this morning, but that promise, it's your promise too. Some things that I see in this story additionally are these. It's that God's power almost nearly always, well that seems like a long phrase saying nothing, but it almost nearly always works in the context of what is hard, painful, small, or weak. In both of these stories, we've got characters who are weak. Ahaz is weak. His kingdom has shrunk maybe to the size of our county, okay? It's not, it's not a big slice of land where he is king. He is insignificant. He is so small. He's in this crossroads. He's between all these different powers that are, are much more powerful than he is, all these kings that have so much more clout than he does. He's small and weak. And in the context of his life, God is showing up with an incredible promise. God showing up, offering to protect him. And of course, in the story of, uh, of, that, of Jesus, there's plenty there about Jesus where the, sto the, the story of his birth, it's, it's hard, it's painful, it's small, it's weak. Just the city of Bethlehem itself. It's this, it's this tiny town today there are about 25,000 people living in Jerusalem. It's five or six miles. Uh, I'm sorry, living in Bethlehem. And it's five or six miles from Jerusalem. 
And you, you probably would never have heard of Bethlehem if it weren't for Jesus being born there. Joseph and Mary, they, they come from Nazareth. And Nazareth is, is a wonderfully preserved village. In fact, there's this enormous uh, church that's built over the, the, the remains of first century Nazareth. And the, the dwellings where people lived, they're pretty small. They, they seem like maybe they're 10 feet by 10 feet. They're, they're, they're not very big dwellings. There are about 200 of them in first century Nazareth that, that kind of uh, line this, the, the area that's right beneath the church that's built over it. I'm just, I'm just pointing that out to you because I'm wanting you to understand Again, you, you, we would have never heard of Nazareth. Nazareth would be nothing to us. It would have been a town that absolutely disappeared and would have been forgotten if it weren't for Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. And that's what, 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 this, what this points us to and what this story and this promise points us to is that, is that we, we often think that God is looking for us to be strong. We often think that God's looking for us to, 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 to be or do something significant. But in fact, the promise of Emmanuel is that God is the one who's significant. God's the one who's powerful. God's the one who, who, who brings the rescue. God's the one who turns around circumstances that are painful and hard, and dark, and weak. And I, I don't know what it is that you maybe face going into the new year. We're all facing something. But hear me today. If you're a believer in Jesus, the promise of Emmanuel is yours. Yours to grasp. You know, Deuteronomy 7 in the Old Testament, it, it tells us why God picked Israel to bless. And it says that God picked Israel to bless because they were the smallest. Now maybe you feel insignificant. Maybe you think that you're just not so important or you wouldn't be important to God. But in fact, in fact, God, God looks for insignificant people to bless. God looks for things that appear to be weak, things that appear to be small in order to bless because He'll be glorified out of it. You know, regardless of who you are, or what you've done, God offers to be Emmanuel to you and to me. You know, this, this, this mentioning here, or this, this line here, God with us, it echoes, it echoes this, this common promise in the Bible that, that God makes. Again and again and again, God says, I will be with you. It's the last thing Jesus says before he ascends into heaven. He, he tells his disciples that he will never leave them or forsake them. He will be with them no matter what. And if you're a believer in Jesus, well, that is, that is a promise meant for you hold on to today and every day. You know, something else I think is important in this passage is this. It's that God was doing something great even though Ahaz and Mary and Joseph couldn't understand it. You know, that's, that's often what God is doing. God is often doing something we can't fully understand in the moment. God is doing something that, that 
because He knows the end from the beginning and because His ways are above our ways and His thoughts are above our thoughts, because God possesses all the power and and all of His motives are absolutely pure, we can't always understand what He's doing while it's happening. You know, this last year, so many times, I have, I have, I have sat and I've prayed and I've thought and I've, I've talked with people, I suppose hundreds of hours of conversation and, I, and prayer and, and reflection on it. And I have wondered, you know, what is the significance of this pandemic that we're in the midst of? What, what is God wanting to accomplish? Why is it that, that it's happened right now? Why is it that it, 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 is, it has shifted public opinion in so many different ways? What, why has God allowed for the virus to come right now? And the truth is, I don't really know. There are some people out there, they claim to know, but they don't. Because I sense that it's God, who's God who is uh, uh, birthing His plans. And you know what? God doesn't always share with us exactly what He's doing. And you might look at your life, and you might think about some things that are going on there, and you can't understand it. Maybe... Maybe it's, maybe it's a, a medical condition that you have, or, or maybe it's an ongoing struggle that you have at work, or, <clears throat> or, or there is a, a, a child of yours who's in trouble, and, and you are looking at it all, and, and you can't understand what it is that, that God could do, or how it is that God could resolve it. Or worse yet, you might think you know how God's going to use it, or change it, or uh, what, what God's going to do in the midst of that circumstance. To me, to me, the story of Emmanuel and, and, and this whole reality that sometimes God's doing something great that we can't, we can't really understand, to me, what, what it points me to is that I need to trust God even when I can't understand Him. Because the truth is, your brain and my brain, it might fit in our hands, but that's really the limit of our understanding. That's really the limit of, what, of, 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 of our reason. But God, God has all the resources. God's got a perfect understanding of everything that He plans to do. And so, he would invite us to trust him, even when we can't sense that he's near, even when we can't figure out how it is that he's going to resolve what's gone wrong. Because his promise is understandable. His promise is not, it's not veiled in a mystery. His promise to us, it, it's, it's not something that you need to know calculus to understand. God's promise is that He'll be with us and He'll keep us safe no matter what. That's the promise. That's what births hope. That's what gives strength to people in their worst situation. You know, Joseph, he couldn't understand what was going on at the time. Joseph found out that his fiancée was pregnant and he knew he wasn't responsible. And the Bible says, in fact, in, 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 in verse 18, you know, that, that he was... He was pledged to be married to her and then he, he found out that she's pregnant. You can just imagine the conversations that must have gone on. You can imagine the things people maybe said to Joseph on the job about how 
his fiancée was pregnant and how he didn't know how that happened. You can just imagine that he couldn't understand it. He couldn't possibly have explained it. But God was doing something greater than Joseph would have ever imagined. God was going to, God was going to make Joseph's name unforgotten. God was going to make it so that more people would be named Joseph than anything else. God, God was in the midst of circumstances that were impossible to, to decipher, just like we are. And God doesn't invite us to understand it. God doesn't invite us to see what the outcome of our circumstances are. God invites us to believe that He's with us in the midst of them. And I'm so glad that I don't need to figure it out. I'm so glad that I can just count on God. And God will give me peace if I will. And the last thing that I, I, I just want to say, and I, I, I just want to repeat, and I, I want to make sure that you see it, and it's this, it's that, go to the next slide please. When God is with us, we can have peace, regardless of our circumstances. When God is with us, we can have peace, regardless of our circumstances. And so I don't know if, if you feel small or insignificant. I don't know how large and difficult your circumstances are. But I believe that God's promise to send Emmanuel is because He wants for us to find peace in Him. So many people... They think peace is found in buying a gun. Or they think that peace is found in, in having enough money. Or they think that peace is found when they can win the argument. Or make the sale. Or succeed in some way. Do you know for believers, that's not how we get peace. We get peace by yielding to God. We get peace by trusting God. We get peace from God by, by letting God have His way with us. So I just want to ask you this morning this question. How will you trust Emmanuel in the circumstances of your life? How are you going to trust this promise? What is it that you're gonna that you're gonna let go of worrying about? How is it that you're going to how is it that you're going to 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 let God be God in your life? How is it that that you're gonna you're gonna release illusions that you can understand all the ins and outs of how God is working and just trust Him instead? Because today, I know this, because it's happened to me over and over and over, that, that when I will trust God when things are darkest, that's when God's power and light show up. I want to ask you if you would, just, just bow your head with me right where you are. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today for Jesus Christ, our Emmanuel. That just like Ahaz could be safe if he would just trust you. Just like Mary and Joseph who were in the midst of circumstances they couldn't fully fathom. By trusting you, it would be okay. God, today, you're extending to us the same opportunity. You're reminding us 
through the scriptures that you are the God who is with us. You're not the God who's left. You're not the God who was once here. But you're the God with us even now. And there is blessing and safety and peace and healing and providence that comes with it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, as your head is bowed and your eyes are closed, I just wonder if there's anybody here today, you, you'd say you're in the midst of circumstances where you, you need Emmanuel. You, you need to be aware and know of God's nearness to you. Maybe you're facing something today and you, you just needed to be reminded that God is with you. If that's where you're at today, will you just slip up your hand? Yeah. Oh, there's a number of hands going up. Father, we... We just lift up these right now who are, who are facing difficulty, who are facing trouble, who are facing need. God, we, we pray your Holy Spirit will come and, and, and fill up their hearts today with your presence, with your ability, with your power, and with the peace that you uniquely bring when we trust you. We pray in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you if you would just stand with me. If today you're, you're making a decision to trust in Jesus, I just want to encourage you, text decision to that number that you see on the screen. Here in the room, if, you're, if you're, you would like prayer, we're going to sing one song, one more song together. I'm going to invite for the prayer teams to just come to the front, right here along the front. They're going to be ready to pray for people, whoever would like prayer about anything at all. God's right here to meet us through these people's faith and through their prayers with you. The rest of us, let's just lift up our song, uh, our song to God. If you'd like prayer, you just step out from where you are and uh, these, these folks here at the front, they'd love to pray with you. Let's lift up our voices.
just ask uh, for Bernie Smith to come and lead us in prayer and bless us on our way out. He and Brenda are with us. Uh, they're hoping to return to Togo next year. They're missionaries. We've been in partnership with for, for decades here uh, in West Africa. And Brenda, of course, she's, she grew up in this church, but would you just come and lead us in prayer and bless us? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again that you came to be with us. Yes. To be with us in the hard times, to be with us in the good times, to be with us as we go through life, knowing that whatever comes our way, we go with God. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to each one of our families. Bless each family that is represented here today. And may we walk with you day to day. And now, may the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be yours from now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you so much.